Hi, welcome to our collab tutorial of quantum kernel methods. I'm Zhi Li. This tutorial contains two parts. First, we will introduce quantum kernel methods. And next, we will show the code to build and train an SVM using quantum kernel methods. You can learn how to build a quantum kernel function and train an SVM with the kernel function from this tutorial. So first, let's have a look at the introduction to quantum kernel methods. Kernel methods, or kernels, also called kernel functions. They are a set of different types of algorithms that are being used for pattern analysis. They are used to solve a nonlinear problem by a linear classifier. The kernel methods are employed in SVM, support vector machines, which are often used in classification and regression problems. The SVM uses what is called a kernel trick, where the data is transformed and an optimal boundary is found for the possible outputs. Quantum kernel. As quantum circuit can transfer the data to a high dimension Hilbert space, which is hard to simulate on classical computer. Using kernel methods based on this Hilbert space can achieve unexpected performance. So, how to evaluate the distance in Hilbert space? Assume Sx is the unitary that transfers data x to the state in Hilbert space. To evaluate the inner product between Sx and Sy, we add a transpose conjugation of Sy behind Sx and measure the probability that the states fall on the L0 states. The figure describes the circuit. Next, we show the code to build and train an SVM using quantum kernel methods. First, let's install Qu Torch Quantum and other labs. You can check the details by unfolding the code cells, but I will skip that in this video. Now, the installation is over. We import the module. Let me briefly introduce the module. As we see, it supports vector classification. We use this module to call the spider vector machine algorithm. Load areas is to load the famous areas data site. Standard scaler is to help scale the data by removing the mean and scaling to unit variance. Train test split is a tool to split the data site. Accuracy score can check how many samples are correctly predicted and give us the accuracy. Function name dict is a very important dict under touchquantum.functional. If we fit the name of the gates we want, like Rx, Ry, or Zz, the dict will give us a function. The function plays a central role in our quantum model. It performs the specified unitary operations on a specified quantum states on a specified wire. These three specified things are the three parameters we need to pass to it. You can see that later. Then we prepare the data site. We load the iris data site. We only use the front 100 samples of the iris data site. Since the phase in quantum gates is 2 pi periodic, it is necessary to scale the data in a range from minus pi to pi. And we change the label stored in y from 0 and 1 to minus 1 and 1. Then we split the data on a 3 to 1 ratio by default. Then we build the answers. 
The kernel ansatz consists of a unitary and its transpose conjugation. Then initializing the kernel ansatz, we only need to pass a function list, and the kernel ansatz will record the function list. Each entry in the function list is a dict containing input index, function, and wares. When executing the kernel assets, three param parameters are passed from outside, Q device, X, and Y. Q device stores the state vector. We reset the state vector to the all zero state. And if you don't forget the figure, we will act, we will act as X and the transpose conjugation of SY to the Q device. Here, the gates in the function list with data X form the unitary XX. SY's transpose conjugation is SY's inverse matrix. From the perspective of inverse, we can build as the SY's transpose conjugation by inverting the function list with data Y. So, how to invert a list of gates executed from head to tail? You only need to counteract the list of gates from tail to head one by one. So here, we simply reverse the sequence of function list and flips the face from positive to negative or from negative to positive. And in each iteration, we need to act the unitary gate on the quantum states. We look up the function name dict with the function name. Here, the function name is the gate name, like R, Y, R, Z, and so so. The dict returns a function. We pass the three parameters to the function, and the function will act the gate on the state vector Q device on the wires with the face. Here, the params means face. Then we build the whole quantum circuit. The whole model initialization is a four-wire quantum state. The TQ.quantum device module can store the state vector and the kernel answers class we just mentioned. When executing the whole model, as there's a concept of batch in Touch Quantum's model, we set the batch size equals one. After executing the kernel answers, we measure the probability that the quantum state falls on the all zero state as the result. We get the state vector, flatten it, get the first amplitude, which is also the amplitude of the all zero state calculates the absolute value of the amplitude that gets the probability that the quantum states fall out the zero states. Then we train the SVM model from sklearn based on quantum kernel. We define a kernel matrix function. We pass the kernel matrix function to SVC call dot fit extreme y train and the SVC object can start training. Then we predict and see the accuracy. The accuracy looks pretty well. Okay, here comes the end of the video. If you have any questions, welcome to contact us. Our contact information is on Touch Quantum's GitHub page. Thank you.